deep within the uncharted wildlands. Hidden away in the lush forests of the tall mountain peaks lies the mystical land of Alfheim, home to the elves. More information on this beautiful park from the creator later on in the video. In the meantime, let's talk about the real Selly Point, a 2.5 kilometer coaster that wraps around the entire park with max speeds of 90 miles per hour, 16 airtime counts, and a 50 meter drop. A marvelous 1.5 kilometer boat ride featuring music from the Witcher 3 game series. Hidden in the mountain depths is the giant inverted boomerang, and I mean giant, with almost one mile of coaster track and eight inversions. Many more rides and secrets remain, but in order to discover them, you'll have to join me on today's episode of Park Spotlight. Ayo, hey my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. In today's episode, we're going to be featuring Elfheim Fantasy Park, created by one of our Discord legend builders, Combat Wombat. And here they say, deep within the uncharted wildlands, hidden beneath the lush forests and tall mountain peaks, lies the mystical land of Elfheim, home to the elves. This is a land full of beauty and fantastic elven architecture, dense forests, serene waterfalls, calming lakes, imposing cliffs, towering mountains and even huge underground cave system. Here the elves and the other denizens of the strange land live alongside the many magical and mysterious creatures that inhabit the enchanted realm. Ancient dryads and the other treekin slowly wander among the trees or slumber in their giant cavernous homes. Between the roots of the forest, while high up on the hilltops, a mighty forest dragon watch over the lands, guarding it from intruders. Alfheim is a large, immersive theme park with multiple rides and a very large focus on theming and atmosphere. There are two coasters, two track rides, and a bunch of flat rides. Music links are on the workshop. All our video game tracks. Enjoy. And I gotta give Combat Wombat a huge thank you for individually linking every one of the songs, forcing me to download them one at a time. That was certainly a time saver. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this park spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Here we are in the land of Alfheim. Hope you're all doing fantastic here today. And as you can hear, the ambience is already fantastic as we have that Witcher 3 soundtrack throughout most, if not all, of the park. And uh, what a perfect, perfect game to choose for your mystical elven lands, other, none other than... The Witcher. Definitely fitting. Definitely beautiful. We're going to be taking our time looking at all these beautiful Alvin structures in between riding some mega rides. Because Combat Wombat is definitely known for cranking out these massive, gnarly rides. Both coasters and rides. So there's a few of those here for us today. A total of four. I have a tree selected in the background. Hello. Look at this uh, beautiful, no longer Venetian carousel. <laughs> wow. So elven architecture is something we don't see very often. Only a handful of times throughout the many, many years of covering this game have I seen it. Um, it's hard to do with the pieces in Planet Coaster without starting to feel somewhat Viking-ish. But as you can see with the little peaks and doodads, a lot of there's a lot of little bit of a crossover between Alvin and Viking to make it uh, distinguishable. Where well, some Alvin architecture, depending on um, what what fantasy you're pulling from. If you're looking at something like Lord of the Rings or something like that, you might expect to see um, more white or, uh, you know, marble and things like that. But what we have here feels more like the wood elves, the forest elves. And I'm very much a fan of what Combat Wombat has created here for us today definitely sets itself apart from the Viking. It's less uh, heavy, less, I guess, um, stoic in its nature. 
and it has that elegance and beauty. So, very well done so far. And of course, you've uh, draped all these vines and bushes around everything and built it in its proper atmosphere with all the waterfalls. We have the day-night sequencer, or I guess just the natural lighting on rotation. So, um, it was set like that by default, so we might as well keep it there for now, at least. And uh, let the uh, sun do its job. Get a taste of both day and night here as we explore around. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Get a little bit of that soundtrack as it passes by. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, that is really nice. We'll have to take a look at that again once the uh, sun comes back up. But we could see tons and tons of little bits of lighting throughout the park, so it works very good at both day and night. And I don't know if I actually got this in my B-roll or not. Um, a bird's eye view of the park. We'll have to do that like later on towards the end of the video here. The park is massive. It's end-to-end -end mega park for sure. But it's done in such a way that we're not... It's not particularly the same of what you guys are used to seeing on the show because we have these rolling hills, these giant mountains, these lush, beautiful forests, and the, the little kind of civilization outlets, the little towns and stuff in between all of it. Um, it's a lot more spread out than the density that we're used to with these mega parks. So in many ways, it's, it's gonna be a little bit more foot travel to get from ride to ride, but we have, in fact, arrived at some sort of ride. So why don't we go see what this is all about? Maybe, maybe it's a wooden coaster, because I see some wooden tracks there. This would be the main feature of the park in terms of roller coasters, so definitely kicking things off with a bang. Um... Might be one worth riding both at day and night because we only have one really big coaster and it does uh, scale across the entire landscape. So I, I think that would be worth a shot. Quite the queue to get in here. Beautiful boarding station. I want to I wanna take a look at this at the daytime to start things off. And then if I, I feel up to it after, we can give it a, a nighttime ride. Or we could save that more towards the end of the video and just come back to it. And that way we have something to look forward to yet again. All right, let's head on in here. Ooh. Wow. Very nicely done. Okay. Ride stats. Here they are. I kind of mentioned them in the intro of the video, so if you want to take a, a second look... There they are on the right-hand side of the screen, and I'll cut to it when it's ready.
Holy good googly moogly. Am I on two times speed? I'm not! I was about to stop the ride because I thought I was on two times speed. That coaster is going so fast, at least from that perspective of the back of the train. Um, that was not as long as I expected it to be because it went so fast. So we might as well just skip over to nighttime and uh, check out the nighttime experience for this. Absolutely amazing. Wow, freaking we. <laughs> as soon as I pulled out of the station, oh, they started flailing. <laughs> I'm like, nope, we're switching that up. Switching that up immediately. Combat Wombat is known for his uh, hellish creations, his <laughs> big monstrous creations, and then that of making demons and, and all sorts of crazy creatures as you can see from that dragon up there we also saw some tree ants that we were passing under the legs of so it's nice seeing combat go with something a little bit more elegant a little bit more in the beauty side um not, not to say he hasn't done stuff like this before but i definitely think this is um furthest from the dark things we've seen from him in the past so this is completely on the other side of the spectrum in terms of uh his his uh design choice but he still found a way to include those monstrous creations, which is very fitting to the Elven, Elven universe here. I'm just going to throw this ride in test mode because it doesn't seem like there's anyone wanting to ride it anyways. And I kind of want to see if we can get uh, a, a decent view of the park from here. Get some of that nighttime lighting. Although this isn't a traditional drop tower. We have a lot of spinning spins going on here. I think I did see an actual drop tower in the park, so maybe that'll give us a better view, and we could do that one from daytime. Just so happens we uh, turn off the day-night sequencer, and it's night again. This park really likes the nighttime, but I can't complain. It looks great at nighttime. Although the, the one downside to nighttime, at least for me and Planet Coaster, I tend to uh, lose perspective of where I am a little bit more. Look at that, you got like a little bridge going up to the the boat ride here. Hey, we got some passer passer buyers. Hello. Hey Omachu. <laughs> Alright. We're uh, sneaking through the back way. I did see a another ride queue somewhere back here, I believe. As I was doing the B roll. I hear a coaster. There we go. 
Yep. Nice little shopping area. You hear that wooden coaster going by at Mach 10. Ooh, this is really pretty. Yeah, let's go see what the uh, belly of the beast has in these mountains. Look at this. Super magical. Perfect time to come in here at night. A little look at the boomerang there. Some cool gnarled huts. Some tree ants. Oh, this is the... Oh, you got a magic cats in here. Look at that. That is the one ride that I couldn't seem to find. And here it is. So we might have a double ride in here. Well, let's see whatever this is. Give it a go. Excuse me, coming through. I was like, hey, there's a, there's a thousand guests to this park. How come I can't find them all? They're all in queue. <laughs> all right, well, we have a magic cat. Let's see what this is all about. Wizard's a refugee. There's a look at the stats if you'd like to see them, and we're going to just hop on this little guy here. Wow, freaking way! 
Very detailed and atmospheric dark ride. Absolutely amazing. I really like the way you've uh, separated your design of your cave here and still made it feel within the elven universe. Feels very elvish in here. Separates it from that of what we've seen with like uh, the Vikings and the dwarves and all that sort of stuff, which again, combat has taken a stab at. So he's definitely uh, differentiating his art style from his other creations and I love to see it. There should be a boomerang down here. Is this the cue for it? Or is this the cue for the, I can't remember. Like I said, I get disorientated at that when it's all dark. Look at these little balby bulbs. This must be uh, the coaster cue, right? Oh, hello. Stay time again. And by the time we finish with whatever we're going on here, uh, it's gonna be nighttime again out there. <laughs> I think I'll just turn it back to day. I believe this is it though. Yes, indeedly do. The giant inverted boomerang. Let's uh, try to click this. The abyss, the Bakasura. There's a look at all the ride stats. If you'd like to see them, 600 meters in track length, 100 seconds in duration, 1260 meters in length. Biggest drop is 50 miles per hour with eight inversions and some awesome Wister music. Let's go. a phenomenal boomerang coaster um, what I really like about this is if we could get a bird's-eye view of this it, the way it wraps each one of these inversions it spirals in and around and wraps around that uh, that in environment and the rock so smoothly it almost just feels like you're flying around the terrain really cool feel to it and then you know you top things off again with the mythical creature popping out of the waterfall with the crack in there and I love the fact that you decided to go straight up the boomerang here right alongside of a waterfall I just thought that was really clever nicely designed nicely themed beautiful full work on this one combat wombat i'm actually a little bit sad to say or disappointed to say that there's only two combat coasters in this entire park well we still have this phenomenal massive boat ride tour to go check out combat is really good at designing coasters as you can see from both the boomerang and the wooden coaster and from what i saw i thought this I think the wooden coaster does wrap around the whole park. It was just, it did it so quickly. Yeah, it, it really does wrap around the entire park. Look at this. It just does it at Mach 10. And again, this is a bird's eye view of the park. There's so much nature and so much going on here that um, I definitely feel like you could have maybe squeezed in another coaster on the back end. Both of them are kind of heavy loaded over here, but uh, that's okay. You know, we can't uh, <clears throat> have every park being a, a Six Flags. <laughs> I just, um, I love of a good combat coaster so it's just compliments to the creator in terms of leaving me wanting more because combat is so fantastic at designing um coasters now i'm gonna cheat a little bit okay 
By cheating, what I meant was I wanted to figure out where the station is for this boat ride so that I at least know I'm heading in the right direction. So it seems to be like the uh, station is somewhere around here. It's hard to tell now that I'm back on the foot level. Uh, wow, look at that. Beautiful composition right there. Yeah, I really love this uh, Witcher music, and that, and that is a smart choice as well. Combat says, hey, this is all from the game, and that is correct. Most game music is created by um, the creators of the game, and the, the, the designers, the game designers, the dev team wants you to do play this on Twitch. They want you to play this on YouTube. They want you to do Let's Plays. So generally, because they make their own music, uh, they're not going to copyright claim their own songs because they want you to uh, share your experiences with the world without all these um, red flags. So choosing Witcher 3 is a good choice here because not only does it fit your ambience really, really well, not only is it really badass, but um, it should generally be safe for YouTube. Fingers crossed at least. Hopefully... Uh, no red flags come up, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that it should be fine. Wow, look at that uh, longhouse there. Beautiful designs on all of these buildings. Here's a queue. That would be the queue. Let's go check it out. Whew. Our last major attraction of the Alfheim Park, ladies and gentlemen, is a massive boat ride tour. And this should take us throughout most of the park that we have not seen yet. And I believe if we go down this path here to the right, it should bring us back to the park entrance. So we could go take a closer look at that when we're done, just so we can say that we've been down majority of the footpath areas in this park. And um, maybe hopefully catch a glimpse of whatever else we may have missed while on this boat ride tour. So let's take a look at this. So we have the Whispering River. There's a look at all the stats if you'd like to see them. And let's get to it.
absolutely gorgeous and adventurous boat ride. I like the mixture between just the lush scenery and then having that little bit of a dark ride adventure with more of those creatures. I think you managed to incorporate all your different mythical creatures into each and every one of your rides. That definitely has that combat wombat seal of approval. That's his sort of signature doing something big and epic like that. And, uh, it's great to see it. Great to see it done in such a different way. I love this windmill that you got going on over here. It's really nice to look at there. Some amazing artwork here from combat showing how it's done. Showing us how to take things to the next level in Planet Coaster with the elven architecture. Really love it. Absolutely amazing. I thought I saw a drop tower, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was that spinning one in the back there. But we are now officially at the park entrance. There might have been a couple flat rides here and there. We did see one there. We There's a couple hidden ones throughout the cave system. I can go to the um, the, the, the ride list here. So yeah, we had the Lunar Carousel. The, the Druid's Conclave is this one here which we sort of passed by there was a hammer swing back here this was the golden phoenix we have the celestial shrine which we did see a little spinning ride down in the cave with the magic cats there and that is all of them so definitely a different take on a mega park that's end to end to end. It definitely is, but laying more into that environment. Seeing what you could do with a lot of forestry, a lot of mountains. And this is no easy feat by any means. I mean, what combat has done here is absolutely amazing. Getting the details of these mountains feeling natural with the all the rock work that's been done here, the painting, the trees, and then mixing in that uh, architecture in between all that, creating land. Point, uh, landmarks, vista points, and all of that uh, really ties it all together. And then you have two amazing coasters and two amazing rides to kind of bring it all together and have you explore all these wondrous lands. It's a really nice way to do it. As mentioned, I guess my only word of feedback or my only wish would have been to have an extra coaster or two back here, even if they're small and less explorative than the wooden coaster, because I really enjoy uh, riding combat coasters. So it's only only, uh, just a compliment to what was already done well that it was done so well that I would have loved to spend a little bit more time here to ride a couple more attractions but that is quite all right this was quite a fulfilling episode and the focus point here was the artistry everything took its time other than the wooden coaster to uh, really soak up all of the details that are these creations like a building like this that combat made is almost 2300 pieces so each you can imagine designing each and every one of these 700 there is a lot a lot of work so combat's focus rather than being that of massive exploration coasters like he's done in the past was to build out this beautiful atmosphere and spend a lot more time detailing all these little builds so i definitely can appreciate the work and effort that's gone into it there and that is why combat wombat is a legend in this community what did you guys think of this build here today leave your thoughts and comments down below for combat wombat if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like share it on social media subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff and that is going to do it for me in today's episode of park spotlight thank you all so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video bye now